Hi, Vern. Today I'm going to draw a magical forest. Which we'll see how it turns out. Mr. Shore, welcome to this evening's presentation of Darren screwing around on his computer. Kenny, welcome to tonight's presentation. I hope you enjoy my attempt to draw on the computer. Colors. Let's just go. So now that I've got the colors on here, now all I'm going to do is try to pull them down into kind of a pattern. probably starting to wonder, how the heck does this become a forest? I'm just keep, I'm just going to keep pulling this stuff as we move up. I'd like uh, some more orange over on that side, though, so let me get some more orange over here. I needed to match more of the colors that are already on here. So we'll blend the, the yellows and the oranges together to give us that feeling on that side. I'm not doing much talking yet, but I'm just sort of, I'm just trying to blend some of these colors together to get the, the coverage in the background. And I'll, I'll get off the, like at the moment I'm using a real big smudge tool. And that's why it's, uh, you can see how it's still got some white areas showing up in there. And I'm getting rid of those slowly. And then once we have got rid of most of the most of the white areas, and we're just pulling 
so we're very close to what I'm looking for here and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to create the trees themselves and so some of this black I have to put some more black in but um, I kind of like the, the color effect we have here with the, the oranges and the it's just very bright and so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this into trees as I as I this one white line here I'm not really thrilled with so I want to get rid of that so there's the, the one white line gone and then I'm going to put some bold black down the middle again because the black is what I'm going to use for the trees or the the dark green or whatever you want to call it so um, no, it's not dark enough so let's go the darker green so that's a little better color so this is going to be my trees as it as they run through the forest and how the heck did you get a forest out of that mess you just keep pulling the colors down so these are going to be my trees in my forest and then I'll show you how they all come together as we get there so now I'm going to move this way down to a lot smaller um, 50 would be a good one to start with and then you can see how I'm going to start to pull some of these branches just to make them these are going to be my branches in my trees so you can see how they start to it starts to become a forest and this part down here what I'm doing on the bottom is I'm going to put a, a river across the bottom here and so I'll show you what I mean and how I'm going to do that here in a second so I'm just going to continue to pull these things just for the time being start putting branches and so from about here down is going to be um, it's going to be the trees I mean the water excuse me I'm going to put some water down so we're going to have it all reflecting in the water so let's pick a real dark green so right here we use a little bit of a bigger brush 500 that's a smudge that's too much I'm not doing smudge I'm doing this one that's my biggest one I can get there 100 so let's put trees across here not trees bushes bushes on the shore of the the river and we want some different colors in there so let's go in a little bit lighter colors in here a little bit too and I'll smudge all those together so this is going to be my my uh, be nice if that went straight across wouldn't it okay so this is going to be um, this will be water down here at the very bottom and then this part above is going to be my trees which I don't like because this is kind of high but let's see what I can do about moving that down now let's smudge it in and then I'll move it down later so this is my this will be my uh, the forest the forest and this is the, the grass or the land that goes across the bottom of it so you can see how I can start to just pull this around and it sort of becomes highlighted, highlighted with some of the yellow in there to give it a little bit of a different texture a different look and so this is going to be my my bottom part of my bushes that runs right across the bottom of the the forest let's take some of these pull it again pull it again pull it again pull it pull it okay now as you're pulling with your your brush what you can find is uh, as you uh, lighten up how tight you hold the, the button down determines how you can soften some of this uh, the pull so it's not just a, like see how that pulled all of that and I could just lighten that up by not pulling so much and so many different colors to it so we bumped ourselves a little bit of a tree but not that big green my green looks like it's a nuclear power plant color too dark mm, let's 
pull this down. Okay, now we're starting to get a little bit of a, an undergrowth here, which I will now move this down to 100. And let's zoom in here a little bit. And let's play with this aspect of it just for a second, because we want it to look a little bit more like some bushes. And so we'll make that work simply by pulling some of this stuff around. Thanks, Brenda. You gave me a heart. That's so nice. Cool stuff. I'm happy you like it. So this is going to be uh, the bottom. Look at this stuff. Woohoo! So this is going to be just the bushes at the bottom of the of the water. And because I put this on afterwards, I don't have the the rest of the colors have gone all the way from the top all the way to the bottom. Now I pulled the top a little bit different so it's taken some of the color but the basic color is still the same on the on the bottom so and this is going to be the top of the bushes here. So in our magical forest we're going to have all these strange little bushes that are in here. And then Let's go even smaller than that. Let's go down to 50, and let's pull some of these up here into these little branches. In the bushes. So you see how some of the, the effects you get when you pull this stuff is so cool because it it it's, it gives you a, a totally different look than than very than any other painting style because it's just it's kind of strange the way it works out. I kind of like the way it gives you that effect as you can pull one color through the other and then take the green and start in the green and then pull it one way and then you can uh, catch a little bit of the black in behind it and when you pull it then it it gives you that funny little texture feeling to it so we want this to come up here just like it's branches coming up and let's put one of the green ones right up into there there you go and then it's starting to look a little bit more like bushes down here as I pull some of these colors up together take a little bit of the texture if you want, and you see how I can just leave it sort of broken all up there, so it gives it that, that funny little feeling to it. There's another one. And another one coming up. And every single one of these ends up totally different as you're painting them, because you never, ever have a pattern that you're working from. You sort of just... This uh, I've done I've done a magic forest before. It's one of the ones that they decided. Um, the gentleman who owns the red pepper um, decided that he liked my magical forest, and so that he uh, he got it blown up to four feet by five feet and decided to put it in his restaurant, which I'm honored and feel very proud of. More because he actually bought the paintings and put them up. Rather than a lot of people that have uh, their paintings in restaurants, they tend to uh, buy them themselves and ask if they could display them and sell them. But um, any of the ones that are in that in the red pepper are for sale, and you're certainly welcome to go get them. But um, that's the only way you would end end up. I don't do art shows. I uh, I don't like, even though I sat in front of a uh, a classroom for nine years. As an art teacher, I don't like the whole um, concept of this is my art show and people asking me what my uh, my motivation was for a certain painting or something like that. I don't I don't buy into that art thing. I uh, I do art because it calms me down and it's my way of relaxing. And so I will spend like tonight I'm spending like 45 minutes working on this magical uh, forest that I got going on here and it. Uh, 
in the end, what it'll do is it calms me down before I go to bed. And so that's why I do the paintings. And so now, now this is going to be kind of interesting because I'll just take a section here and I'll show you how this works. So you can see that branch that I just created there. And you see how, how nice and light it comes out. And you can pull it all the way across your forest. So, And it pulls not only the black, but it also pulls the other, other colors in there. And you can make things lighter, heavier, and you end up with a little bit of a forest coming out in the one where Tinkerbell might live, if you believe in Tinkerbells. And you can see how quickly it just comes together and it ends up as a, a kind of a neat looking little quick painting which definitely shows the, the use of the pull method of painting. And as I said, this is going to be a very quick painting that I'll get done in one sitting where the face I did the other day took me like three different settings. So it took me almost uh, three hours to do that one. This one here is going to be done very quickly. Because it's not one you dwell on the little details. It's all it's meant to be different every single time you draw it and every single time you paint one of these. And each one is so significantly different than the other one because you're just pulling crap all over the place. So the one I did before was um, was a less branches and a little bit more reflection and all that other stuff. So you want uh, some of these branches to go right off the top of the page. So it gives you that feeling that um, it draws your eye up. And so you see the way all these branches are, are on an angle and moving. They give the feeling of motion and they give the, the sort of draws your eyes up. And so everything is sort of floating up on this. And then we'll try and pull it all back down once we get the water in there. To the way the art theory works is that if you have things that are on an angle, it gives motion. If you have things straight up and down, it will settle things down. And that line right across there calms things down a lot because it's a horizontal line. And horizontal lines are calm, have a calming effect. You see that white, white you should always have white branches because it's cool. Look at that white. See you know how it stands out. So that's kind of cool. Let's see if we can pull this white one here and get the same kind of effect. Uh, kind of, but it's not as white. So you see how some of the shadows, like some of these darker darker areas, you could think that, okay, maybe that's going off into the back into the forest in the distance. And so some of this, uh, these effects that are kind of fuzzy, it's like the forest is going off into the distance and you can create a little bit of depth in there. So now that we have that, it's kind of cool. Now to create this, uh, this water down here, is uh, fairly simple to do. All you do is you take uh, about 60. No, not enough. Uh, let's go 160. 160. Okay, and all you do is do this. some of this back black come down into it because it's too uh, it's too orangey so we want some of this black and maybe some of the green to come down in the water and then you just go back and forth across it and lighten it up again but I want some of the black to be in there
Just pulling in some different colors so it's not so orangey and yellowy or whatever. You gotta get rid of some of that. Orange and yellowness. It says green one doing in here. We need some black over top of that green. Too too much green. Okay, and then let's get even bigger than that. Let's go to about 300. to a different nib. It's too powerful. I want a softer one. 357 would be nice. Looks like lava. Lava flow. Too much. But I'm going to go in there with a smaller, more powerful nib. And then I'm going to draw the lines across. So let's go with a 50 and pull lines across. So the, now it's going to start to look like the creek is flowing. So you got the basic colors in there. And now I'm just going to draw the, the line straight across like this, which will then give it a little bit of a swampy, uh, swampy color and pull some of the colors in different directions. So it's starting to come together. Pull, pull, pull some black down there, pull some black down, pull some black across there, pull some black across. Okay, now let's go back in there to the top, that fuzzy one again. Uh, that was this one. And we go to 357 again. And now that what we're going to do again is this will just soften this again. And give it a little bit of a wiggle. Wiggle, 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 wiggle. Now we're going to do something that happens a lot in water. We're going to work with a smaller brush, 50. Let's go 10. Maybe just put some blue in here and see what that looks like. Oh, don't like that line. That line was a little bit too carried away. Go back up into my smudge tool. We gotta go in there and do it again now. So 50. Now I'm doing it again where I'm starting to pull these. So it's kind of cool the way the colors start to work themselves out and start to you start to see the different shades of them interact and because I'm using a totally different technique here on oh that was ugly see too much of an angle um, I'm trying to draw it straight across so as you pull the mouse you want to make sure your mouse is fairly level to give you that feeling of the water just sort of flowing by in this swampy land that we live in. And then what we're going to do is we're going to play with the, the camera flares 
a little bit just to give it a little bit more of a uh, So just give it a little bit more of a focal point because you really don't have a focal point in it anywhere. So we got to work on that a little bit. Okay, zoom in a little bit here. Yoo-hoo, zoom in for me, please. Thank you. We want to take that light blue. I like that. And we want to just put a little bit of highlights in here. So it's just on the edge of the water. And I'm going to soften it up by smudging that in there as well. Smudgy, smudgy, smudgy. So then what that will do is it'll just put a little bit of a, a border type thing in between the two of them. So the two of them together with a little bit of the blue flowing sort of the edge of the edge of the water there Ooh. I was gonna gross a little up the color there Cool. The program I use, Brenda, is a um, Corel Draw, but you can do it on almost any drawing. Any any drawing program that has a smudge tool will allow you to do this kind of drawing, and so uh, that's basically what I'm using is the smudge tool most of the time on this. So. It just allows me to pull colors in different directions. Okay, so now on this one, what we're going to do is we're going to put in a real, we're going to work with white because I want it to be um, like a magical type thing now. And so I'm going to try and get a light coming through about here or just even there would be fine. It, I just need to be a little bit brighter. And so the, at the moment, I, you can see this allows me to place that wherever I want. And so if I want to place it here, as my light source, then what it'll do is it'll come in as that. But you see how, how faint that is? I don't even like that. So I'm going to go with the uh, the overexposed left. Let's see what that does. <laughs> Woohoo! Overexposed, that's an understatement. Okay, let's go smaller, smaller. And so all I'm doing is I'm putting in a, um, I'm putting in a spot that is going to be my the light in the middle of my picture. So fallout hmm. and black. What's the black all about? So all I did was add in a little bit of a flare there. I want to brighten it up a little bit. Okay, so you see now I have a little bit of a flare in there. And what it does is it puts these things in here too, which are are from the 35 millimeter. I don't know what's exactly what they're called, but um, then I have a little bit of a flare in the middle of my painting. So now I'm also going to use some of the effects from the same thing. Um, I'm going to use the lens flare again, but I'm going to talk about uh, not the same one. So it's not the last one I used. I want to use some of the. Uh, I got to move this away here. Now this is way too bright. Let's lighten it down. Let's see what kind of weird effects I can get from this. And so what some of this stuff is going to do is it's going to give me the... Uh, some of the weird little uh, streaks and stuff through the through the painting. But I don't like that color either. What happens when I go to white? Let's go to white. Let's see, not not the one I want to use. So that's called Star Warp, uh, Star Explosion. 
That's kind of cool. Now what I want to do is I want to do a pile of these little ones and just put them so small. Now let's make them about a three. So I'm going to put a couple of these threes in there and I want the brightness to fall off on some of them. And so each one will be different. So this one I'm going to put right here just because these are the little fairies in my little magical uh, thing. And so I'm going to use these a lot. And so you'll just have to bear with me here because I'm going to pop through these fairly quickly. The name of the program, so, sorry, was made by Corel. And the one I'm using is the Corel Photo Paint. And that's C O R E. L Corel and it it's a great program but it's got uh, it's I've been using it for many many years because I used it for a lot of my drawings uh, to adapt a lot of my drawings and so for years and years I used this program and used about 10% of it and it's only recently that I've started to to play and try to do some uh, some drawing with it and so you'll find it uh, It's overly complex and uh, annoyingly so sometimes. Ah, I lost it. And a lot, uh, it's just annoyingly uh, complex, but I still only use about 15% of the, the program itself. So um, I, it's not the one I would suggest for people. Like I think the one that's caught on a little bit more now is, um, let me think about this for a minute, the one by Adobe uh, Photo paint or whatever it's called I'm not too sure if that's the right name but um, I noticed a lot of people have used that instead and that's good like the fact that they're using something different like all the power to them um, but the it's actually not so much the program you use as the technique that you're using when you do it so um, That one was kind of cool. You see how that one sort of sucked right into that area? So that was a good spot to put one, actually. And so I'm going to put the next one in the water. And so all I'm all I'm doing now is just sort of um, playing at the very end and just putting a few drawings in, a few star effects in. And so right on the right on the coast of this very land, we're going to put a little star there. And now we have to talk about the size. And so I want this one to be a little bigger right down on the bottom. So if you have one that powerful down here, you may want to put the same type of power up here. And so the next one will give me um, the same power exactly. And I'm going to soften it by changing the color of it a little bit. So I'm going to take it off of the, the white. And so again, that little uh, cross allows me to hit it but I don't it took away from that those white branches so I'm gonna put it down here a little bit farther and it's too big or it's too bright excuse me let's soften it so that's kind of nice but then let's make it a, uh, a yellow one but that yellow which is kind of cool so I like that so I'm okay with that one <laughs> let's we need one down here eh? So let's put another one in there. I want another. There we go, this one. And this one I'm going to make a bluey. But that blue. And then I'm going to move this over to the side. And I'm going to move the location of it. If you don't move the location of it, what it does is it ends up right over top of the last one you did, and it just makes the last one so bright that it doesn't. It's not what you want. So kind of see how that's kind of cool because it has the actual the radiation, and that was one area of the black that was too big. And so even if I move it over here a little bit more, no, that's too far. There would be a better spot for it. So you see how these things start to balance themselves out, and then. Well, I've got all that on there. Let's try another effect here. Let's put in some mist. So now we're going to mist it up. So we're going to go down here to creative and we're going to go to weather. And the weather I'm going to turn. No, I don't want it to rain. I want it to be kind of foggy. 
just a little bit, but not that much. The size of it down a lot. Do I want it to be misty? Does, do I like that better? I'm not sure. Randomize it. Move it up a little bit more there, fellas. Don't want to have it give it that misty feel. I don't know if I like that. Blue. Snow. Now if I uh, lighten that up and go size really small, that's kind of cool. It doesn't even look like snow. It kind of looks like speckles all over the place. What happens if I go right down in size to it? That's even better. It just puts a little... Uh, I kind of... Let's leave it at that. I like that. Very cool. <laughs> that worked out well. Thanks, Brenda. Thanks for asking the questions. Normally, people just come in and watch, which I don't mind, but it uh, it's kind of nice to have people ask me questions. Okay, Dimer. Let's go down. Lots of bubbles floating around. How is that weirdness? kind of like those because they look like they actually pop right off the page. Like, what the heck is all that stuff popping right off the page? Refraction does what? Hmm. Don't notice much difference. What happens if I make them huge? Huge, but very few of them. Bubbles. 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 Let's leave it in there. It's a magical forest. I can do whatever the hell I want. Color transformation, camera, lens, time machine, spot filter, blur. Do I want to blur, soften stuff up? No, art strokes. Do I want anything from that? Nope. 3D effects, the boss, the zigzag, the glass. Nope. Distort anything? Nope. What does the wind do? Does it mess it all up? Creative, kids play, vignette. This is kind of cool because a vignette always just darkens up your outer edges. And so you can control it by, if I go down to black, it'll make my edges and make it a little bit more woo kind of stuff, right? And so turn down the offset or turn up the offset so it's only on the outside edges and you see how it darkens things out and then you fade it. Just so it makes your outer corners a little bit darker. And so that it kind of gives it a, a little bit of a mysterical feeling. So you can see how it's darkened up the top edges and the bottom edges, which I kind of like. So then there's a, uh, a vignette added to it. Blur, customs, creative. I've done all of those ones. I don't want anything else from there, I don't think. Uh, particles. We'll talk about the particles here a little bit. Not bubbles. So I want stars. And I want the size of them to be huge. But I don't want so many of them. The colorization's fine. Transparency. No, I don't think I like those. No, I think the snow did a bit of effect. So I think that's what it is. It's kind of cool. I think I need about one more uh, star in there, but not the same size. I want it to be very, very small, and I want the brightness to be way down, and I still want it to be blue because I'm down here in the water, and I want it right there, but not that light. A little bit higher than that. There we go. Welcome to my nightmare. 
and then one more way up here. Camera lens. There's some other lighting effects that I'll show you here in a second, and I'll tell you, and you can tell me whether or not you like them or not. That one's too bright because it's it's too close to this color, so I want to get it lighter lighter still. So just barely there. Thanks, Brenda, for mentioning me. I just got a highlight off my thing that said. <laughs> Magical forest with little fairies and other things that you never want to ever beat in a dark, dark alley. Um, this lighting effect is kind of cool. What it does is it just highlights one aspect of your picture, so I can uh, you can move it wherever you want. And what it'll do is I use I used it in a, I use it a lot when I'm working in the in. A, a night scene or something like that but you can see how it lightened up some of the stuff in here and I don't I don't really like it you see how it's there it just highlighted that stuff so and this is a, one of the best things about working on the computers if you don't like something you take it the hell off so there's my quick drawing tonight you guys I hope you enjoyed it and I'm gonna throw down my little signature right here I think I'll do it in black Right in that red. So we zoom in, and there's another picture. Very similar to the one that is now famous and in the red pepper here in Saskatoon. And I'll add these to their gallery in a, in a day or so. So, But I'll put it on the Facebook so you guys get a chance to see it. I'm going to save it as a JPEG. And save it on my Google Drive with all my other iPad drawings or my computer drawings. So it would be under iPad drawings there. And there you go. And I can throw it under. This will be Magic Force number two. Magic Forest two. Save. And that saves it up. So thanks, you guys. Feel free to comment anytime you want about... Uh, any of my drawings, or if you have questions or something like that, Brenda, if you ever draw anything, make sure that you share it with us. me. I'd love to see it. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.